We're still up on the tripod. Leaving the Shangri-La family campground. Well, it's still a little dark out here, so I don't know if you can see me clearly or not, but we did spend the night. I don't know what time it is, 6.15 maybe. Had my coffee and my oatmeal. Uh, oh, someone else is leaving the campground. Walking down the side of the road that we were on yesterday to arrive to the campground. A little bit about the campground. Um, they asked me if I was hiking on the Bruce and I told them I was doing a through hike of the Bruce and they said that they'd like to get more of the Bruce Trail kind of hiking business. They get a little bit, they said. I told them that they should contact the Bruce Trail Conservatory. They should maybe offer a discount uh, upon presentation of, let's say, a Bruce Trail uh, Conservatory membership card, say a 10% discount, and maybe carry certain items that a hiker, section hiker, through hiker, and so on may be looking for, such as uh, maybe some mountain house type freeze dried meals, uh, the small kind of cook stove butane gas cylinders that we use through hiking, uh, ramen noodles, instant mashed potatoes, this kind of thing, uh, kind of the staple of the through hiker. Little things like that, maybe a hiking uh, emblem on their sign. Um, a few things just to attract the hiker and maybe offer an incentive, especially if they were a member of, say, the Bruce Trail Conservatory. As I say, say a 10% discount upon presentation of their card. I don't know. Just a thought. Anyhow, it's $45 plus tax. They have ice cream, which is $2.50 for a giant soft serve ice cream. It was very good, good reasonable price. I also had a slushy and I, had also, I also purchased a large bag of potato chips whilst I was there. Uh, of course, shower, nice hot shower. You didn't have to pay extra for the shower. Some camps I've stayed at like that, you have to put coins in a machine or in the slot to get the hot water. Not this one, it was included. So, all in all, my overall experience, the campsite was nice. Uh, quiet time is after 11. Um, when you're camping in the woods and stuff, just like stealth or wild camping, you don't really have any noise, generally, after a certain time. Depends where you are. <laughs> Night before last, I was right at the side of Taylor Road almost, so that was a little noisier, but I did notice last night it was a little noisy till about 11 and then the music and stuff just stopped. Uh, through hikers midnight is about seven, eight o'clock at night. <laughs> hey, welcome to day number three. Woo! Day number three on our Bruce Trail northbound, northbound Bruce Trail attempt. Uh, again, walking down the side of the road, going back into the forest shortly, I think, on single file trail. So today, heading north, continue pushing towards Grimsby. Uh, I think I'm about 32 kilometers to Grimsby, and I'm not going to, I don't believe I'm going to attempt to get all that today. It is possible, it just depends on how I feel and terrain and temperature and so on. It's supposed to get warmer and hotter today again. Uh, so it just depends, it just depends how the day progresses. But I'd be happy with a 25 to 28 kilometer day, which would give me, I don't know, somewhere five, seven or eight kilometer hike into Grimsby tomorrow morning, which works out fine because the food basic is right there off Elm Street. And right next to the food basics is a family diner that's open, I think, till about two from, for breakfast and lunch. So a nice breakfast. Um, and a, uh, I need a small resupply, I don't need a huge one. Uh, but I do need some things to get me through to Waterford, which would be my next resupply point. Get me through Stony Creek, Hamilton, Dundas, those areas. Uh, make that turn around the horseshoe there. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of a little update 
of what's going on right now. As I say, it's day number three, and so far we're and when we left camp this morning, we was at 52.3 kilometers into our hike so far. Hey, let's keep pushing forward. Thank you for joining me, by the way. I really do appreciate that. Let's go. To my left and a little bit to my right, you may see the dappling of orange, uh, golden, the reflection of the beautiful, beautiful, and yet diffused within the trees, sunrise. Very reminiscent of actually the Appalachian Trail in so far as um, quite often on a morning I would experience a sunrise, but again diffused um, through the trees. When I, at the beginning of the Appalachian Trail, uh, starting in February, February the 24th I believe I started, there was no leaves on the trees and the views were significantly better but after a period of time spring did indeed spring and um, the views became obscured by the leaves on the trees the sunrises were diffused again by the leaves on the trees hidden on a few occasions I was on a mountain top for sunrise or a bald and it was spectacular but that just reminded me the little patches of golden light you see it through the trees through the trees down there you see it and ahead of me little balls of golden light reflecting from the sunshine as the sunlight bounces off reflects off tree trunks and so on yeah hey uh, I just checked my app, which is my maps for the Bruce Trail Conservatory. And right now, looks like I may have miscalculated slightly. I thought it was a little further to Grimsby, but it's showing me at about, right now, at about seven o'clock in the morning, it's showing me at about 27 kilometers to Grimsby. So again, I don't know if I'll try to push into Grimsby later on this afternoon. I know my diner for breakfast won't be open, but on the other side of the Foos Basics, because I've used it before, there's also a pizza shop. You can get slices there, and I've done that before too. Whoa. Here are the banging, the bird bangs uh, machines from the, um, there it is again, from the wineries, the vineyards. Keeps, keeps the birds away from the grapes this time of year when the grapes are getting ready for harvest. Okay, just a little bit of something. Let's keep moving along. Just ahead of us, the step climb um, of Bo at Balls Falls. <laughs> now, at the top of this climb, twice, uh, two times on my northbound through hike attempts of this trail, I have camped up there. I elected not to this time simply because when I've camped up there before, I've started the hike early on a morning at the Queenston Park. And keep in mind this time, I started much later at noon. Hence, I didn't, um, I didn't get here at the end of day two like I normally would have. Although I am surprised that I got here so early on the beginning of day three. I'm pretty much catching up with my normal schedule of starting early at Queenston Heights because it's going to be about eight o'clock once I get to the top of here. And I believe in the past I have left this camp area at around 7ish on a morning. So that would only put me about an hour behind. Now, I know I got to get out of my head somehow the catching up idea and get more into just an easy flow of the actual hike. Okay. 
Having said that, let's just take an easy flow up these steps. As we reach the top of the climb at Bert at uh, Balls Falls, we descend down the other side to this really neat, absolutely beautiful kind of a days gone by, or what you call that, a bygone days kind of settlement. Hold buildings uh, for the public to come and see. I mean, absolutely amazing. What's this? The blacksmith shop, uh, circa 1850. Wow. Yeah. Just beautiful in here. I've always admired this little area. Once we get to a little road here, we're going to cross over a bridge and we're going to make a right turn. Uh, I often thought the field that we go through next would be a great spot for a little stealth camping, but anyhow, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the church, I think I'm actually supposed to be at the other side of the church. I am. The trail is over there, look. Yeah, pretty cool. What is this particular building? Was it a school? I don't know. Let's see what the sign has to say. This is the Fairchild Cabin, circa 1800s, built by the Fairchild uh, family between 1797 and 1810. Let's get a picture. The trail this morning has proven to be a little more challenging than yesterday, for sure. And day one, well, day one was just a nice, easy-going kind of afternoon. Uh, took a little break and ate a, a bar, a uh, granola bar. Dried out my fly sheet. Not that it rained last night, but just from all the condensation in the morning dew. I uh, did that sat on a bench by a by a vineyard, which was really quite nice. There was a nice breeze in the shade, and yet my fly sheet was laying down on the grass in the sunshine. Dried very quickly. The trail is very pretty going through these forests. Uh, I do like the forests. I um, also like the mountains. The mountains of the Colorado Trail, the, the US Rockies. Just beautiful through there. But I do like the forests too. And there's nice little spots to camp here and there. Just for a little wild camp, a little stealth. Uh, in fact, up to now I've seen all kinds. Um, I've never had a problem on the Bruce Trail doing that, like finding locations that are just quiet, peaceful, out of the way, not bothering anyone, nobody bothering me. Just a little mention of some of the gear. When I was doing the Appalachian Trail, I entered into a town called Manchester Centre. They have an outfitters there. Now, up to this point, I'd been using just cheap Amazon generic $20 trekking poles and going through them pretty quickly. So in that community, at this um, Outfitters, they carried Black Diamond as well as Lecky trekking poles. These are more expensive, kind of more of a professional grade trekking pole. But there was a model number or a model that I wanted of the Black Diamond and they had them, so I bought them. That's this set of trekking poles that I'm using right now. And you know what? I have, up to now, they did, I don't know how many miles, how many kilometers they did on the Appalachian Trail. I, I just no idea right now, but a lot. And then other day hikes between then and now, and now day three on the Bruce Trail. But I really, really like them. They cost me 89 US dollars. What are they? There is a name on them and it says, well, they're black diamond and it says trail back, uh, trail back. So uh, they're not cork, it is a rubber handle. The cork ones was another 50 US dollars more at 
I went with these ones at $189.99, but this is the model that I wanted. Had great reviews, and for me, they've been fantastic. They're not carbon fiber, they are aluminum, but they've been fantastic. Just thought I'd mention that as a little tech tip gear thing, review this morning. We may add a few of those in along the way, make it a little interesting, talk about certain gear items, what works, what doesn't. Maybe some food items, what works, what doesn't, <laughs> which is everything's personal, I get it. But I should say what works and what doesn't for Jasper. Okay. <laughs> Let's just keep laying down these miles this morning as we push towards Grimsby. We're about 19 kilometers to Grimsby right now. And again, how are we going to arrive in Grimsby today? I don't know, but we'll see. Time is progressing. Right now, it's about a quarter to 11 on day three. And I'm just taking a little break. I'm going to have a, a bite to eat, which we'll talk about in a moment. But I wanted to show you something. Right here, right, see my pack and everything. Fire pit. And some really nice tent spots. Perfect right there. Now, as I say, it's a little early in the day. It's only like quarter to 11. But if this was 4 o'clock or something, I'd be all over it. A couple more camp spots right in here. Absolutely perfect. There's been lots of people long before me, and I, you can even do some up here too. You can even do some up there too. There's a nice little spot right in there. So there's lots of people on this trail. And I've just, I've passed, just passed several spots where I'm sure it, it's typical of through hiker. This is not typical of through hiker, this particular location. This is the kind of location where locals might come and camp out or maybe I don't know maybe a Boy Scouts club or whatever I don't know what I do know and what makes me think it's locals at camp out is because if you look at the fire pit you see the trash that is something that tells me definitely not through hikers because they're just not going to do that uh, anyhow again there is lots and lots and lots of opportunity I'm going to sit on this log and this is where I'm going to have my lunch. And look, more garbage just took next to this log. Oh well. Anyhow, I'm going to sit, sit in this log and have my break. Probably like a lunch type break. I think I'm going to have one of my Berkshire cheese slices. Possibly two. And a bagel. A little electrolyte water. I'm guessing I've got about 17 kilometers yet away from Grimsby. And again, am I going to get there today? I don't know but I am going to have my break. Beautiful forest here, by the way. You take a look at these trees. Absolutely gorgeous. That sky, beautiful. Take a little look at that. Golly. What a beautiful view from trail overlooking way over there, Lake Ontario. And way, way, way in the distance, I'm pretty sure you won't see it on the GoPro, but if there's some way I can point it out to you, I will. But somewhere over here, somewhere over here, you see Toronto. But I don't think you can see it in the GoPro. Beautiful, beautiful view on trail. The trail today, definitely more challenging, only in so far as it's been rocky and so on. Um, and probably the biggest climb so far on on, on our northbound hike um, today but still very kind of easy going for sure uh, compared with others such as the Appalachian for instance um, so yeah absolutely gorgeous to be honest with you just look at the trail through here isn't this just beautiful beautiful forest the overlook that we just had it's just to my right <laughs> Just through those trees to my right. Uh, it was just behind me, oh, 10 minutes ago where we had our lunch break. And then almost as soon as we started, we came across that beautiful view, which would have been a nice spot too to have lunch break. But anyhow, that's okay. I'm not sure what time it is right now. It's got to be somewhere between, I don't know, 11.30 or 
12 o'clock or something like that, I guess. So the time is moving on. Okay. Speaking of moving on, why don't we just do that? Well, day three has come to an end. Ooh, hot day today. Very hot. Tomorrow's supposed to be the same. Then I think on Sunday, uh, today's Friday, I think on Sunday, a little bit of rain, but a bit of a cooling for a few days, a couple of days, anyhow. Then it's supposed to get hot again. And I was speaking to Joanne, Joanne, my girlfriend, and she was telling me the long range says September and October will be warmer than normal. So, there's good and bads on that, but some rain on Sunday will be okay insofar as it might help with some of the water sources as we push further down the trail. Today, 24.3 kilometers. It's around 15, 15 and a half miles. Um, nice little camp spot nestled underneath some trees. There's a row of trees and edging and bushes. Behind there are homes and you can maybe hear a motorcycle on a road. There's road just ahead of me. I think it was called Walker, Walker Road. The trail in the morning is right over here. I don't know if you can see. I don't know if you can see. Oh, where is it now? Somewhere here, there's a tree with the blazes on it. Right there is a tra trail in the morning. Um, I am four kilometers, four, four and a half kilometers from my resupply, resupply point in Grimsby. And I think they open at seven, if mem memory serves me correctly. Right next to them is a breakfast and lunch diner. I'm not sure what time they open, but breakfast and lunch, they usually open early. Uh, so I'll set my wake up for five, be on trail by six. I'll still have my, my, my coffee probably and my oatmeal in the morning and then hit the trail and um, get my resupply done and have a breakfast at the diner, a bacon and egg breakfast maybe, or something like that with some toast and some potato. Um, after that, little change, two things. First of all, my app for the Bruce Trail Conservatory's maps and charts and so on that I'm using for all my navigational needs is chewing through my battery power of my um, iPhone. It is using 44%. I've got every setting that I can uh, in a kind of reduced power mode to help save electricity in my power packs overall, but that app is using a ton of electricity. That's not good. Secondly, my next resupply point would be Watertown on Monday. Monday here in Ontario is Labor Day. I contacted them and they have closed that day. And that would be a three days after I, when I leave Grimsby tomorrow morning, that would be three days, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I would arrive there. So I'm just gonna have to carry a little extra with me, enough for the next three days after that to get to my next resupply which is going to be a motel night. So that's six days away from now, which is a motel night at the Cedar Springs, which I've stayed at a couple of times, two or three times on my hikes. Well, several times on my hikes, four or five times. Um, and then at there I Uber into Georgetown and I can resupply there. And that will be probably around next Thursday. So almost a week from now, six days from now, including starting tomorrow, six days. So I get a, a motel stay then, a shower, wash my clothes, shave, resupply, and push north from there. Day three's come to an end. <laughs> Day four's gonna start, but not until tomorrow morning, thank goodness. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, yep. A big welcome to day number four on our northbound through hike attempt of the Bruce Trail here in Ontario. Whew, little bridge ahead. Not a lot of water in that water source, but you know what? We don't need water right now, but we could filter from there. We could make that work for camp or drinking. No problem. Hey, welcome to day four. It is September the 3rd today. It's a Saturday. There was, from what I could see of it, kind of a, uh, the sun approaching the horizon. 
and it's again diffused through the trees, but much thicker trees this morning. It's behind me now. It was bright red earlier, now it's gone to an orange. Ah, if you can see, if I turn that way. Oh, you can see maybe the sun through the trees, like a, a tomato sitting in a fruit bowl, maybe. Actually, I stole that line from a po poem. I remember as a kid, as the sun rose, it looked like a tomato sitting in a fruit bowl. Well, it does. <laughs> Let's not worry about fruit bowls right now. Uh, yeah, so day four, approaching Grimsby. Few little changes in the plan. In Grimsby, I was just going to top up my, re my, my foods, bars, and a few little things here and there. Not a lot. I'm going to say $25 worth, maybe. That's all I would have needed. Because my next <coughs> resupply was in Watertown, which is only 67 kilometers from Grimsby, from my resupply in Grimsby at the Food Basics on Elm Street. However, this being a holiday weekend, I now discover the Walmart that I was going to use. Also, the Canadian tire for butane gas that I was going to use is now closed for the holiday on Monday. So those resupply options are not available to me. The Rizzo Shoppers Drug Mart, kind of down the road from those areas, uh, from those stores, it's possible they'd be open Monday. Uh, pharmacy needs and so on. And they carry quite a good food supplies as far as your bars and so on are concerned. You could always grab some stuff there, but I'm not going to count on that. So I'm going to resupply in Grimsby a little more and from Grimsby, I think I have to check, but I think it's about 149 kilometers from there to uh, the Cedar Springs Motel. And that would be my resupply in Georgetown. The motel is a motel I've stayed in before and it's just north of Georgetown. It's like a $20 Uber in and $20 Uber out. So I will have enough butane for there. And I'll pick up some supplies, enough supplies at the Food Basics today to make sure I'm okay for that for that six-day hop um, again to Georgetown which is fine it just means essentially I'm carrying a little more weight but there's not much I can actually do about that as you can see the trail this morning or well, if you can see it that is rocky challenging yeah sure yeah I mean it's not bad moving along quite fine. I stayed where I camped last night. It was a little park. I think it was kind of a Bruce Trail type park, but it wasn't an overnight rest area. Just outside Grimsby. Just off, I think, Walker Road. Underneath some trees. Beautiful, quiet spot, though. Got water from a, a, a construction site, home that was being built. A gentleman working on the masonry who was making cement and stuff, and he filled up my, topped up my bottles. So I had good camp water, extra camp water. So that's nice. Okay. When I left camp this morning, I had four, a little over four, about four and a half kilometers to Grimsby, or to my resupply spot in Grimsby. Uh, so let's just get those done, shall we? I just came off trail. Uh, Bruce Trail's just behind me, and there's a brand new bridge to go over. The last time I came that way, um, the bridge was being repaired and we had to use a detour. The bridge is open now, so I just came off trail. Just ahead of me, left and then right, is <clears throat> the plaza where one will find the food basics. And um, the family restaurant, breakfast, lunch. There was a pizza shop at the other side of the food basics, but I noticed on the map now it says something like a, something grill or something. So it may have changed, I don't know. Um, but anyhow, I think the diner is still there. So hopefully a bacon and egg breakfast this morning. Some coffee. Our resupply. And here we are. Oh, by the way, by the way, we just finished section one of the Bruce Trail. 
Yeah, we are done with the Niagara section and we are going to enter after our resupply and when we get back on trail we will then enter into the uh, Iroquois section that's a large section if I remember rightly 126 or 129 kilometers after that comes a shorter section of the Toronto section so all is good take a little look here beautiful little area of Grimsby <clears throat> some of the building that's a commercial building optometrist and maybe some apartments condos townhouses whatever homes I don't know but it's kind of like the old uh, and mixing with some new um, <clears throat> anyhow just to the right here is where you'll find your plaza oh now, it doesn't look like anything's open at all. Am I that early? Can it be? What time do these things open here? It's a Saturday. I thought the food basics would be open by now. Only a couple of cars. <clears throat> now, I think the food basics is open. It doesn't look like the diner's open. Elm Street Cafe Grill. Yeah, that's not open. It says breakfast and lunch. Damn, let's see, well, they want help, help wanted, Monday to Sunday, 8, so it opens at 8, okay, I know it's after 7 now, so we'll maybe see if we can find a plug, if we can find a plug, we can connect into some electrics, in fact, there's a plug, I think, right there, I'm not sure, we'll plug our electrics in, and then we'll do our resupply at the Food Basics, That could be a plug right there. And if it is, we can maybe charge things. Is it? No. Oh yeah, there is a plug. Okay. I might see if I can set up at this plug here and um charge things up. Okay. And then we'll go do a resupply right in there, and I do believe that is open. So I seem to recall. <clears throat> Both the food basics and the dine are opening at 7 a.m. Um, but not now. It's 8 a.m. now. And I think that's due to probably staffing, but I don't know for sure. So, right now it's, it's, I've been waiting about 15 minutes, 20 minutes already, and it's 20 to 8. So, I've got another 20 minutes to wait. I cannot find an outside plug that works to be charging my batteries, which is... That's a bit of a bummer, but not much I can do about it. So it's just hurry up and wait, then resupply, then breakfast, then the trail. Should be on trail by 9.30, hopefully. I'll be okay. Be okay. There's the diner again. Yeah. There is a McDonald's up the road, but by the time I get up there, it's going to be 8 o'clock anyhow, <laughs> so we'll just have to wait here. Ahead of me, the new bridge that was out of commission the last time I was here. And as I mentioned earlier, we did the detour over the bridge, if I recall correctly. We're going to make a left turn and we're going to begin the climb up and over what's called the Grimsby Mountain. Oh sure, it's not really a mountain, but it's a good solid climb. So the bridge goes over a rocky little, mm, quite dry creek, although there's water there. Okay, so we don't turn left over the bridge. We kind of turn right. Okay. Uh, and then I think, well, you know what, let's see. I honestly forget, to be honest with you. I truly forget. But I think we're going to start the climb shortly. Maybe here we make a left. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So that's going to take us up to the beginning of the, the climb, I think. 
So we resupplied $38. We had a big breakfast. Sausages, potatoes, and eggs with pancakes, orange juice, and coffee. Expensive. $24.99 for the breakfast. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful home. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Stone. Beautiful. The actual trail. Oh, day hikers ahead of me. Well, my pack's heavy. Uh, we're carrying 1.7 liters of water right now. It's going to be a hot day. Plus a resupply. So the food bags are heavy. So you know what? The plan today, the word is take it easy. Take your breaks. Rome wasn't built in a day. Just log some gentle miles. Okay, we are now entering, by the way, the Iroquois section. First view of the day from atop the Grimsby Mountain. Wow, looking at Grimsby below Lake Ontario and uh, beyond. Oh, beautiful. I am meeting some wonderful people this morning. I've met Linda and Chris. Uh, Linda follows me on my YouTube channel and my Facebook page and she was all excited to meet me and of course that made me, made me so much excited to meet her charming lady charming pair of ladies uh, thank you for being so kind and your kind words um, <laughs> yeah and then uh, just as I got to the top of the mountain there was a young gentleman and oh my goodness I just can't think of his name now uh, but he watches my channel. He follows me. He knew all my trails I'd done. He knew everything and he commented on on lots of stuff that I've done About this that and the other and different trails that I'd done a few years ago. So he's been with me a long time and It's so nice to meet that gentleman young gentleman and his charming lady that was with him uh, Yeah, and he's he's done a lot of the trail by the way He's done all the way. I think it from something like Cape Corker all the way down to the end of the Iroquois section now. Um, so he's done a lot of this trail. Oh, more views, look. Take a little look-see. You can see Toronto, but whoa, it's in the haze. It's not much to see. Uh, humid day today, hot, humid. Uh, rain coming tomorrow, the last I checked on the weather, which was a couple of days ago. Uh, so yeah, resupply done, <laughs> pack heavy. I keep saying that. <laughs> And you know why it's not so bad on the flat. Uh, carrying some extra water uh, just for drinking. Still haven't been drinking quite enough. Um, and I know when I get to Stony Creek Devil's Punch Bowl later on today, early, late afternoon-ish, um, there's a little side street I can take down to the shoppers. And if there's no natural... Uh, wild water, if you will, uh, natural wild water source. I will, like I did last time, I got my water there, bought a four liter jug and filled up my bottles at the shoppers. And if I remember rightly, I went down the street a little bit and I had a really nice ice cream cone. That would be nice to do that today too. And that would be good before hitting camp. And maybe a couple of kilometers past there, find a little camp spot. And you know what? I have a plan for the day. And then tomorrow would be Sunday, of course. And we'll be that much further ahead. Okay. Well, let's just get to it. The last time I was through this park area, uh, the pit toilets behind me were all closed up due to COVID. But they're open today and of course we use them but right here next to this tree is where i camped for the night i camped right in here yes i did and it was fine uh, unfortunately the as i say the pit toilets were closed it was garbage cans but it was all covid related one thing i'm noticing this time 2022 september 2022 a lot of the things that were closed then due to COVID and now back open again. Most things. So that in itself is great. A lot of day hikers today, Saturday, long weekend, uh, beautiful weather. Good day. So 
So yeah, lots and lots of day hikers out. Okay, I think it's called the Beamer, Beamer or Bremer, Beamer Conservation Park area. Ah, there's some signs down here. Maybe we'll see you there. Okay, let's go. Yeah, Beamer Memorial Conservation Area. The sun's right in our eyes here. So that is where we are right now. Right here, the parking area for the parkland. Beautiful. And I see a blaze across the way. If memory serves me right. I think it's a left turn. But you know what? At 65, my memory is just not what it used to be. I'm not sure if it was any good at any time. I think I have selective memory. Almost like selective hearing. Yep, there's blazes. Okay. Well, we're going to be exposed. We're going to be on a road. But, okay. It's a, it's a bit of a push because I exposed hard on me in the sun. But it's a little faster. Helps you get the miles done. Okay, let's go. As it approaches noon uh, on day four, I think, I'm gonna guess I've about, oh, maybe 12, 12 and a half kilometers uh, to the uh, Devil's Punch Bowl. Um, and if there's no water at the Punch Bowl, that's where I can just go down that little side road to the Shoppers Drug Mart and buy jug water. And then camp for the evening shortly after that. Lots of bugs in this section for the last hour or so. Get hot. Lots of sweat. Oh. Yeah. But we're doing okay. Um, the trail, well, you know what? In certain sections it's been rocky and climby and somewhat challenging. In other areas it's pretty easy going. Right now it's pretty easy going. Take a little look, see, it's actually quite nice. Take a look at the trail as we progress. It's a nice forest trail. little bit just a little bit of an afternoon update so I think it's about three o'clock now on, on day number four give or take anyhow and we've got it's somewhere around 4.6 kilometers to the parking area or exit that I would take to jump off trail um, to go down to the shoppers and get water uh, and maybe an ice cream cone so, I don't know, 4.30ish, give or take, I should be there. Um, oh, it was some kind of quite a large flying thing there, but anyhow, I don't know what it was. And then, if I do that, uh, just take a little break there with some ice cream or something, I get back on trail to, I think, the next available spot uh camp spot so i think that's my plan um i was gonna stay i thought about because it's been so damned hot today and absolutely soaked in sweat just been pouring out of me uh, but i was thinking of the stony creek motel i thought air conditioning tv nice bath shower whatever wash my shorts maybe wash my t-shirt um, this kind of thing, maybe my socks. Start off in the morning again, all fresh on day five. Uh, and I thought that sounded like a great idea. So, of course, it's Saturday of a long weekend. I called him one time. He said, nope, no rooms. But then I called back again. I'm not sure why. And I said, do you have a room? He said, I've got one room left. He said, it's $105 cash only. And then $25 deposit cash only. Um, if you only if you come in the next hour, I said, well, I wouldn't be there till five or six o'clock because uh, 
That's how far I was. This was a couple hours ago. Now I had this conversation with him. Uh, sound very much like a shyster uh, throughout the whole conversation. I said, well, I'd really like to get the room. He said, yep, you and everybody else. I thought, well, it's not very nice. So anyhow, cut a long story short. I think I'm going to pass on the motel room. Not that I wouldn't enjoy it. It's just, um, I really don't want to give the man my money. I can save that money for further north. Maybe in a different motel or even a bed and breakfast somewhere. I know where there's a really nice one. I think it's Rockland. Bed and breakfast. I think it's Rockland. Rockledge. I forget. But it's at the Beaver Valley section, I think. Just pushing towards the Sydenham section. Uh, I stayed there the first time. Leslie was a hostess, his name. Charming young lady. Wonderful breakfast. Very nice room. And then, back in 2019, it was $99 for the Bruce Trail hike at rate. Hmm. Don't know what it'll be today, though. More than that, I know. Anyhow, so there's a little update uh, of what's going on this afternoon. By the way, I've got a tech tip for you. It's to do with the buff. So first of all, if you notice, today, this afternoon, there's been a lot of bugs on trail. And they're buzzing around you. They're kind of annoying. You put a little spray on, but you sweat, 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 and it just goes away. And buzz in your ears and land in your ears and I don't know. Maybe they even poop in your ears. I wouldn't know. But I find if you put a buff on like this, it soaks up the sweat, obviously. But if you put it over your ears, the bugs don't know there's an ear behind there. They have no idea. Um, I just wanted to give you that. I guess that's our tech tip for the day. How to use a buff to the fullest of its benefits. Your benefits. The trail, let's take a look. <laughs> Obviously, the heat's getting to me. Babbling nonsense. Okay, the trail is beautiful though. And it's been a good trail today. Some little challenging areas for sure. But overall, it's been a working trail, no doubt about it. And nothing's given. But it hasn't been horrendously difficult. And I think by the time I'm done, I'll have somewhere in the 20s, mid 20s, as far as kilometers for today. But you know what? Uh, oh, but nice butterfly ahead of me. Let's see if we can get close enough for you to see it too. Just in front of me. Beautiful butterfly. Oh, there he goes. I don't know if you've seen him, but he's gone. Anyhow, so yeah, about the mid-20s. Say 24, 25, 26 kilometers, depending where we actually find a camp spot. Um, once we get out of the Devil's Punch Bowl kind of parking area. Uh, or maybe right there would work. We'll see. Uh, but that's lots of kilometers for me. I'm happy with that, especially on such a hot day. It's got to be in the 30s. Uh, my t-shirt is just soaked. That's one of the reasons I thought, oh, a motel would be nice. Yeah. Rinse all this uh, sweat off oh, out of my clothes. But anyhow, that's just life on trail and ahead of me. Past Devil's Punch Bowl is Falkers, Falkers Falls, I think. I don't know if that's got water, but uh, might be a place to rinse a t-shirt off in, if there is water there. But that won't be till tomorrow anyhow, I don't think. I doubt if I'll get that far. My pack will just be that much heavier when I load up with camp water. Okay, let's keep going. I made it to Stony Creek. And the ice cream store is closed Saturday. Everything closed early Saturday of a long weekend. I didn't know that either. But anyhow, having said that, I weakened. I called the motel. I was, I was thinking of telling them that I wouldn't be showing up and they'd please rent my room to someone else. But she said, well, I saved you your room. And I said, okay, I'll take it. Uh, so I'm heading that way now. And it will be okay, be air conditioned and I can wash my t-shirt, my shorts, my socks. Um, I got lots of food, so I'll just cook something in my room and I can relax, watch a bit of TV uh, and then continue tomorrow. So Stony Creek is where we are and I think today is about 23 kilometers. So there we go. That is what we've done today. 
Anyhow, if I think about it at the time, I'll show you the motel when we get there. <laughs> Basic hiker trash motel. And I have just had my shower. So I hope there's no reflections on anything because I am just wearing a towel. My TV, already got it on. I got myself some A&W burger fries and coffee. I got my laundry hanging outside already washed up in the bathtub. My bed for the night, my pack, I'm going to unpack my pack and um, repackage some foods, check a few things, make sure we're ready to go in the morning. Day five will start bright and early and I'll see you guys then. Good night.